Hill is a sleepy town on the banks of the Pocomoke River on Maryland's eastern shore. It's known for its bald cypress trees and abundant fish and wildlife. The dark waters and wooded shores are popular with boaters and hunters. But Snow Hill's infrastructure is old. After a big storm, says Mayor Stephen Matthews, rainwater and organic waste overload the sewer pipes. You get all of that water, it gets mixed with all of that sewer, and then all of a sudden it, it's like a tsunami hitting the, the sewer plant. It does reach some points where it, it comes in at such speed that we do have to just sort of open the floodgates um, and let it run. Potomac Riverkeeper Ed Merrifield patrols the river looking for violations of federal and state laws. He says when pipes overflow with sewage and rainwater, it all ends up in the river. There's no other way to put it. You don't see the sewage directly, but you see everything that's still floating on top. And we have, we have run tests here on the water quality, and it's terrible. This pipe is among 53 that dump both sewage and rainwater into the Potomac River during an overflow event. The pipes belong to the D.C. Water and Sewer Authority. They serve 2 million people in Washington and the Maryland and Virginia suburbs. Because of a court decree ordering a fix to the problem, the authority is building a $2.5 billion tunnel system to manage stormwater and sewage. Moshin Sadiq is the authority's supervisor for environmental planning. He says the project will almost eliminate polluted overflow. This is required to be able to, to catch all of the CSO that is otherwise going to the river and cause water pollution control problems. Meanwhile, many Americans are unaware that fertilizers from their lawns, oil from their cars, pet waste and runoff from building sites are a problem. These move quickly over paved surfaces into storm drains and eventually into the bay. George Hawkins heads the Washington, D.C. Department of the Environment. He says this garden at a D.C. school is one way the city is working to curb runoff. Stormwater that's being absorbed into the ground here is not going into the stream or is not going into the storm sewer system. And when it does, it's filtered through these plants and these roots, so a lot of the pollutants have been removed. Hawkins wants citizens to do more on their own properties. Leslie Basins has a grant from a D.C. program to transform hers. She put in native plants that hold water in the ground, recycles dirty water from the roof, and has a porous sidewalk that allows water to seep into the ground rather than flow to the street. And she's not finished. I want to get rid of most of our lawns because I feel like putting pl plants in is a lot more beneficial than the lawn. And I would much rather care for plants that will attract wildlife, butterflies, hummingbirds. While Washington, D.C. is only 1% of the Chesapeake watershed, D.C. environment head George Hawkins says his projects make sense for homeowners and builders throughout the region. So this is a good business model as well as a good economic model. Hawkins wants enforceable pollution standards for the residents of cities and suburbs across the region. He says, like farms, urban areas must be held accountable for the pollution they create. Roseanne Skirbel, VOA News, Washington.